from the top of West Mountain in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Good morning, everybody. This is Sanity Check. I'm Libertarian Betsy, and we have Tea Party Mike and Libertarian Lou on the line. Um, we're at 94.3 The Talker. Please call in and talk to us today at 888 888- 577-4487. We would love to hear from you. And today in studio with me is Terry Martin. She's uh, the head of the Quad County Independent Gazette. Thrilled to have her here with us. And uh, uh, we're going to be talking about community action. Um, the Quad County Independent Gazette just came out yesterday, uh, got published, and uh, the first article on the front page, top of the fold, is a history of Founders Day. And um, Terry, I'd like to uh, ask you a little bit about that. Yes, I'm ready. Uh, well, Founders Day is, this is the 33rd a- annual Founders Day. The paper is all of the information uh, on the, uh, the subjects of the people that will be there, the, the way that the Founders' Day ever started to begin with. And if anyone would like to pick up the Independent Gazette, the Quad County, it's at any place where newspapers, you know, anyone would get the... So like convenience the, stores mm-hmm. and... Oh, and subscriptions. You know, anyone can get a subscription to the paper. Now, they can get a, a subscription by going online, correct? Yes, or they can call in. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good, good. And many of the advertisers that we have take bundles of the paper, too. So you can pick them up at a lot of the local businesses as well. Oh, that's great. Now, the Quad County, what counties does that encompass? Bradford, Wyoming County, Sullivan, and Susquehanna. Okay. And in in this, uh, if we're going to take a few more minutes here to mm-hmm. talk about the the paper, many people ask about... Uh, how many people? Excuse me, about how many people will be reading it and how far it goes. Now, many people that do advertise in the paper are doing it because of the love of what the paper means, what it is going to try to accomplish. We are trying to get counties to look into other counties at their businesses and try to help uh, our local businesses grow. So that's what the paper. Yeah. yeah, I know in Wilkes-Barre, uh, uh, I'm a judge of elections, so on election day, uh, I was working the polls, and I can't tell you how many people came up to me and said, boy, I love that paper. And so, you know, the advertisers believe in it, but it's also important, you know, you know some of them aren't getting direct home delivery because it's for whoever has the time to walk around and put them on people's doorsteps in Wilkes-Barre. And, um, uh, and I've said to them, go online, get a subscription. Um, we will be having a booth at the Founders Day also, so people can come in and talk to us. And uh, what we are looking for in the paper, though, is not only ads, because that is what supports the paper, but we want to hear stories. We want to hear from the people. Uh, whatever they have to say or whatever options that they would like to see in the paper. Now, do you all, are you also looking for people to submit articles? Oh, absolutely. Right. Uh, recipes. Yes. Uh, you know, the vets are who we really have the big heart for because they are the backbone of America, you know, yeah. so we really want to hear vet stories or any way that we can help them. And recently we have, found our new office for the Independent Gazette, their home. And uh, in this house, it is, uh, it's a huge house. There's many rooms that we are, want to refurbish. And anyone who would like to come and even be a part of that, we would like to offer those rooms too, even the vets, anyone to come for their meetings. Now, do there. you have a phone number where you can be reached or is there a way that people can reach you if they're interested in helping out with this project? Yes, they can. And one number they can reach is 570-575-8185 or pick up the paper because all the information is there. Oh, that's so cool. Good. Uh, today, I'd like to talk a little bit more about... Um, um, 
what we can do in our communities to to help build back that feeling of community that I, I, I think we've lost. But but first, I'd like to say hi to Lou, who is yes. on the road on one of his uh, uh, economical vacations uh, where he was out west. And uh, are you there, Lou? Good morning, guys. How you doing? Hey, hey there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Cruising along here I, uh, just outside of Fergus Falls. I don't know if anybody... Uh, Betsy, maybe you might know where Fergus Falls is, or maybe... Uh, no idea. Uh, Terry. <laughs> That's about 150 miles uh, west of Minneapolis. So uh, I am in Minnesota making good time. Uh, stayed north on the way back here, for sure, only because to uh, avoid the weather. Hey, is Mike on the line? Nope. Not... Oh, Mike, uh, not yet. Okay. So uh, I, the reason I brought that up, too, is, is that we've been able to avoid... Uh, even going down when I was uh, heading out uh, west this past time, the weather throughout the United States has been, uh, ter- you know, uh, hard in, in certain areas. But uh, so far I've been able to uh, avoid it by just uh, uh, staying a little north uh, as I headed out to uh, Vegas and did the convention out there. And then uh, on the way back we've uh, decided to stay north and uh, avoid the uh, the storms in Kansas and in South Dakota. So. So far, so good. So I, it looks like we're sailing the rest of the way, and uh, should be uh, should be heading into Pennsylvania sometime tomorrow. I wrote down some notes, guys. I I, I can't believe it. You know, with all the miles I put on, uh, and and now I'm heading back into the uh, the home of the potholes. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I you know made some observations in in Montana for sure. You know, coming up through Idaho and. Uh, as soon as you uh, hit Montana and, and through Dillon and then Missoula and up to uh, Flathead and then back on down, going over the passes, uh, McDonald Pass and uh, Bozeman and through Billings and on out to Glendive, uh, probably about six, seven, eight hundred miles. I, I, I don't know the uh, the exact amount, only because I went uh, a couple side trips there. But you know, I, we say all the time, "Don't believe a word we say," but I have not. I have certainly not hit a pothole, but did not hit a pothole, and I, I, I could swear I, I, I did not see one. So I don't know what kind of materials we're, we're using here in Pennsylvania, but certainly I would encourage uh, a pen dot to start looking into maybe the materials. It, it, it's used. not the materials, Lou. It's it's who you hire to do the work. So <laughs> Cousin Joe's no, uh, <laughs> uh, highway repair in Pennsylvania um, with kickbacks to our elected officials who hired Cousin Joe. Um, they obviously aren't doing that out there. Uh, thank God, you know? I mean, that's uh, part of our problem that that we deal with now in our communities is that everybody's bought and paid for and uh, and kickbacks and corruption. and. Like you said, I mean, it's isn't it amazing that we can have decent roads if they use the right stuff and build it the right way? It'll, you know, it'll hold up to you know, abuse. It's, it's obviously something to actually look into, I think, a little bit more. I know I, I listened to James May on the David Madeira show, and, and certainly the, the subject has come up with uh, just, you know, just the, the huge amount of uh, work being put into repairing the roads in Pennsylvania, but then when you do look, and obviously there's, there's other factors, but one of the factors I always hear about is the snow and the thaw and everything else. Well, I, th- there's still roads in Montana that are closed for snow. Last year when we were up in uh, the road road to the sun up in uh, Glacier National Park, that road didn't even open up until July 3rd. So I, I, I'm not so sure... I'm not so sure it's about the 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 the, the, the uh, frost eaves and all that stuff, but maybe it is. But uh, and and certainly the amount of traffic we have to look on. But Betsy, I, I know you've brought up all along. I mean, you you've looked at the Turnpike Commission, you looked at all this stuff oh, yeah. and, all, and all your activism throughout the years. And and one has to question what is really going on. I mean, is uh, you know maybe. Maybe the the real question is let's let's compare the materials that are being used on the roads in Pennsylvania as opposed to some of the roads out west there, 
uh, and maybe that's not the answer, but certainly it's something to look at. Now, now we do have Mike on the line now. How are the roads right. in Texas, Mike? <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I guess I was, I've been trying to call in, and I finally got in, but the roads in Texas are, as Lou said, I don't know that there's too much work out here for front and alignment guys because you're not hitting holes all the time. And, you know, and I understand the part, as Lou was discussing, about the, you know, the frost and this and that. But, Lou, you know how it is out west here. I mean, these, it gets hot out here, and these roads have to be hundreds of degrees. And I'm just wondering, you know, doesn't that boil up or affect the way the roads should be? And, and no, it really doesn't. As a matter of fact, here in Little Blanco, you know, total population about 1,700, Last year, the main road coming through here, through here it was perfect, and they were repaving it. And, and, and I, I'm thinking there's just a, a different mentality that, you know, we're going to maintain these roads before they become a, you know, the surface of the moon. And, and as we said, it could be materials. It could be planning. It could be, a whole, it could be corruption. It could be a whole combination of everything. But, you know, I can assure folks that, you know, the roads here are relatively flat here in Texas, and you could see for miles. It's, it's, uh, it's very easy to drive on these roads and very seldom. I don't think, except for the flooding that we had here a couple of weeks ago where the, the roads had bubbled up and they're going to be repaired and they're working on those. But um, actually those, those parts of the roads that were destroyed from the flood are still better than driving through the roads of Scranton. Uh, it, it's, when I was in the couple, a couple of years ago, it was like, Oh my goodness! What, this is like a third world country here, Betsy. You know, and and there doesn't seem to be any urge, urgency to try and fix things. And how do we ex- and it, how do we expect to attract businesses when they can't even can't even get in and, and you know be able to see what Wilkesbury Scranton area has to you know has to offer? And and it is Lou's right. There has to be a look into maybe it's materials, but I think it goes deeper than that, Betsy. Yeah. Well, and I really believe. I mean, we have, um, you know, there's Roman roads that are still in use today over in Europe. So yep. it yep. it's the way that they're built, the money that's put in initially, and our taxes have paid millions and millions of dollars and to repair these roads. But originally when roads like 81, 80, Turnpike were put in um, from the stories that I've heard and Dan Flood and and the politicians was that they did a lot of money went out, but the quality wasn't there. And if the base isn't solid, you're never you're always going to be repairing these roads always you have to have that solid base but when they put them in the the payoffs and kickbacks and everything else and without the oversight to make sure because it was cousin joe doing it you know nobody was going to look at exactly how he was doing it you know we're promised one thing and we get another so uh, it, it, it is just so obvious. I mean, it's just you know, like it, it as, as one drives and 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 you know cruises around the country, which is huge, and certainly we could talk about the resources uh, of what the country is all about. And I do have a few stories that maybe we get into after the break, guys, if you want to. But it, it is just it, it it is so telling that you know the difference in in the roads and. In fact, I, I, I was, uh, as I was coming through North Dakota last night, uh, uh, early evening, on, uh, on the back of the trucks, you know, sometimes you see, you know, the, you know looking for drivers. And one, one of the things, Michael and, uh, and Terry and, and, and Betsy, they said, uh, uh, no back east travel. And I started laughing. I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> they probably get a lot of different drivers that drive down south, out west, you know, the Midwest, and uh, but no east, you know, no, uh, no, they're not required to uh, drive back east, and I think part of that would be the congestion and the roads and all that other stuff. So, huh? Well, well you know, it's it's interesting, uh, Lou and Betsy. I, as a kid, every now and then we travel down to the Jersey Shore and 
<laughs> my dad always used to say, I don't need any signs that tells me I'm in New Jersey now. I can just tell by the conditions of the road. Now, th- that is 50 years ago. You know, so it hasn't changed a bit. And you would think over 50 years they would have come up with a solution if they really wanted to have a solution. So, you know, Lou, you know, in, being in Montana, and maybe you can share that, is certainly the weather is – you've got frost out there in Montana, don't you? You have frost <laughs> lines. You have, and, and you don't see the conditions of the road, I'm assuming, Lou, in Montana being the conditions of Pennsylvania. Road. Mike, so what's the Mike it, it's unbelievable. I mean, I, I, I mentioned before you came on, I, seriously, I, I don't remember seeing one po- – I went hundreds of miles. Maybe six, seven, eight hundred miles, and I—I I mean, it's just—it's just, you know, just revealing. As once again, you just make these observations as you're driving, and and I know Betsy, like I said, uh, you have looked into the Turnpike Commission. I know you did that when you were running for Auditor General, and it's just something to look at, and, uh, guys, and and certainly it's one other area of corruption that we need to <laughs> need to delve into. Well, hey guys, well, I just, uh, we. I just need, I'm sorry. Go ahead. We need to uh, break here for our sponsors, and uh, we'll be right back. Sanity check. Sanity check with Tea Party Mike, Libertarian Lou. Saturday mornings, ninety four point three FM, The Talker. So we are back at Sanity Check, 94.3 FM, The Talker. Uh, Give us a call at 888-577-4487. So this is Ladies Day today, except for, of course, we have uh, John who's filming us. Uh, I don't know how Lou ever let that happen. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) He might be sorry. Uh, so, So... I'm missing you guys today. I have to tell you, I had nightmares last night. I was uh, waking up thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to miss my cues. I'm going to run over. I'm going to mess something up somewhere. So, uh, But it's good to hear you you guys on the line. Um, but, uh, well, great opening there today, Betsy. I was I, I was paying attention. I know that. So uh, yeah. Well, you, last you week you fell asleep, <laughs> uh, and and we miss Frank. I mean, Frank is always uh, always has he yep. cracks me up. He's uh, he is funny. So he's on the road too. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So so Mike, when are you going to come back up and visit us? We're, we're looking sometime this summer, so we're hoping to get out there and, you know, maybe share some stories here from Texas. And, you know, I want to let everybody know, don't get too down on Pennsylvania because there's good old uh, southwest corruption here, too, Betsy. And, and you see it, it's it's blatant. You know, one of the things that I was thinking about the other day is how corruption used to try to be hidden. Now it looks like it's just wide open, and they don't really particularly care if they're hidden or not. And I, I think that's kind of a telling tale of where our political uh, future might lie, is that they they have the fixes in, and they're going to ma- manipulate whatever they have to do to make sure that the outcome is in their favor. You know, I, I'm looking at the uh, political, you know, the Republican Party and their multitude of uh, faces running for president. Matter of fact, I thought for a minute there, I saw Frank's face right in the mix of it all. So um, <laughs> when he wasn't there this morning, I thought maybe he was out campaigning for president. And, and I, I, I'm pretty confident Frank would make just as good, if not a better president than what we have up there. But, you know, <clears throat> when I'm hearing on Bill O'Reilly, which is not one of my favorite shows, but how, you know, he was saying that, that the whole system and the way you get into the debates is on how the you know, how the polls are running. And then I thought to myself, but the polls aren't even accurate. So, so the belief that you don't get into the debate if you're not polling at a certain percentage absolutely drove me crazy because, you know, you have possibly good candidates in there, better candidates in the top five, perhaps, and they'll never be heard from, Betsy. You know, and this is where we get right back to, you know, free and equal elections. How do we fix this? And it just really seems like a heck of an uphill climb for all of us, Betsy. 
Yeah. Well, I when I I think my first big race when I ran for U.S. Senate, um, Quinnipiac, who does these polls all the time, decided that they weren't going to include me in their polls. So there was four of us running, um, uh, Arlen Specter, uh, the Democrat, a Reform Party candidate, and myself. And I was uh, just totally ignored. It was like I didn't exist. So I decided I would go down to the campus and... Uh, and I stood on the campus and handed out information sheets that I truly did exist and that I should be included in their polls. But, you know, look at how they, in some of these polls, they don't include certain people. So, so it isn't even how you're polling because sometimes you're not even on the list to be polled, to be part of the poll. So... Yeah, I mean it's it's tough. You know, uh, Michael, you just uh, sorry. You know, Mike, you, you just brought up uh, about Pennsylvania, and you're absolutely right. It's just not about Pennsylvania. It's in Montana. Uh, we just left Vegas here a little while ago. The, the the corruption seems to be running rampant all over there. It's in your face. Uh, I, they just raised the business taxes there, Michael. Uh, I know the uh, conservative uh, Republicans and libertarian Republicans, and, and uh, they're, they're outraged about what's going on. You got, you know, the taxi cabs in Vegas are, are all owned by a few families, and it's, uh, it, it's everywhere, and it is in your face. And the only way it's going to change is, once again, is, is, is the exposure. And what we're all trying to do here, really, uh, against many odds, is, is, is to, you know, increase the exposure that we can do through the Independent Gazette and, and, through, and, and through the radio. And uh, so it, it's all over, and it's not it's just not Pennsylvania, unfortunately. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're right. And, you know, one of the things I think as individuals is that you know, we, we could certainly put more pressure on our, our lawmakers by picking up the phone, you know, just, just saying, look, this stinks, and, I, and I'm not particularly happy about it, and my next vote is not going to you. And, and if we can do that, you know, uh, as, a, as a mass of people making those calls, but there seems to be some complacency amongst the, the citizenship, Lou, and is that because people are so distracted from the, you know, the Kardashians or, you know, Bruce Jenner and his, his new identity? Because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned about that, too, Lou, that we have a population that really has their head in the sand, that they're not interested in taking care of their future, and, and that we're always into play mode. And you know, how do we change that as a culture? So, you know, I, we do have an uphill climb, but you know what? It's, we did during the revolution where the, what was it, under 10% of the people really got involved in what was so important for our freedoms. And, and I think that's where we are today, hundreds of years later, just right back to the same place, Lou. And I, I think that, Mike, you brought up how blatant uh, the corruption is. It's as Bruce Jenner, oh, sorry, Caitlin, um, stated, the new normal. Well, the new normal right. has created a huge voter apathy. And, um, and it's affected our elections where people just don't even bother to go vote because they might know what's going on and that's the problem they do know they see the corruption it's blatant it's shoved right in their face and you know what these politicians are going to keep doing it anyways so you know why bother why bother to go cast a vote for a crook you know well, and well, i think that's the real problem and that's where we have to take it back and where we have to get involved. And, uh, and it can't start from the top down. It has to start from grassroots, bottom up, and things like the Independent Gazette, I feel t truly, maybe, you know, you just spur one person on, you know, but if you do one person every day, and then they, that spurs somebody else on to do something the next day. It's, it's a slow 
building process. I mean, you guys know because of the Independent Gazette how how long it's taken. I mean, we started this after I ran for Great. mayor because we could <laughs> not believe the voter apathy. And we realized we had to start educating people. And and one way to do it is through an independent media source because all the others are just as bad as our politicians. They're all bought and paid for. And they put out there what they want you to hear, not what's actually true and going on. And that's what Lou says about the Independent Gazette, that we may not agree with everything that is in the paper, but we print it because it is freedom of speech. Yeah. That is what's needed. Awareness is needed. People gave up. I think they lost their hope and think they don't have a choice anymore, but they do. We just have well, to take, you know, it, take it back. It's very interesting. Yeah. I, I'm at work yesterday, and a young lady comes in. Of course, you know these kids are all forced to get the meningitis vaccine before they enter college. So you know, I was doing that. And, and I said, what are you going to school for? She says, oh, I'm going to be a journalist major. Oh, uh, well, she got a little education after saying that. And she, she couldn't believe the story. You know, just the story that, that if some of our listeners remember when X would tell us about um, – when the, the the one story, and I forget the story on the, that the AP put out, and they had experts to back this up, and AP calls, and it's their ex calls AP, and AP says, oh, that's just kind of the folks around the office here. We ask their opinion. So that's how really confusing the stories are and how misrepresented the stories are. And when I was telling her some of these stories, she com- was completely blown away by that. I said, well, just, just consider this the first part of your journalism education. To watch out for that stuff. So you're right, Betsy. Maybe, maybe just put a bug in her ear, and and now she maybe has some awareness of of whether this is true. Is this part of it? Is she going to be end up being disenchanted, knowing she has to only promote certain positions? So it, we've really, I think, the good part of it is to get to the youth, is to get them to realize that they're going to be shaken down worse than we are if they don't start becoming aware of Betsy. So I think there is some real importance to get into the colleges. Yeah. And I'll never forget the one time um, one of our newspapers in Wilkes-Barre had printed a story and it was extremely favorable for me. And I thought, oh, wow, this is great. And then, but when you went online, they had changed it and they had taken huh. out, thank God I had bought a copy of the newspaper because what you saw online Did not even mention, you know, maybe it had my name, but it didn't talk about my positions or, you know, my vision for the future or, and, and I thought, oh my God, they, within a couple hours, so I couldn't forward this on and say, hey, look at this great article because it wasn't a great article anymore. It was very disturbing. That somebody got a call shortly after the print and said, okay, we need to make some changes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, so then, how many people are buying newspapers? So things like the Independent Gazette are truly very, very important. So well, thank you, guys. Think, I don't think Lou has any arguments with that. <laughs> what's, that what's that, Michael? I said, I don't think you'll have any argument with Betsy's last statement. No, not at all, and and certainly I I, I know you you guys are probably heading into break, but maybe when we come back from break, you know something that was was brought up while I was in Montana. I was with uh, Ben Garrison, who does a lot of uh, our, our cartoons, and he's a longtime uh, newspaper man himself uh, out of the Seattle area. And one of the things that we had mentioned, one of the things that we talked about, is exactly what Terry just talked about. Michael, you talked about was that, you know, and, and you, Betsy, brought up that people are giving up, that they're sticking their head in the sands and they're, they're throwing their, their hands up, and, and where do you turn? And we got onto that conversation a little bit, and he says, listen, Lou, you know, even, even there, you know, people are talking about whether maybe they move to Costa Rica or they're going into, right. down to Panama to get away, and where do you go? And he said, listen, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a former, uh, you know, military guy. He says, I... I I have chose now to keep my fight here. I am going to fight 
uh, for my country right where I'm at, for what I believe in. I'm not going to run away, and I'm going to do what I can and do my best. And I, and I think that's where, where we're all talking about here is, is that I know, Terry, uh, you're going to talk to a lot of the, the veterans groups and you, and you go to the rotaries and you're going into uh, these other groups, and that's, that's the message that you're carrying. So maybe we talk a little bit about that mm-hmm. yes. um, as, as we come out of break or something. Great. So off we go to break. This is Sanity Check 94.3, The Talker. <laughs> And we are back at Sanity Check. So, Mike and Lou, you still there? We're here. I'm still here, too, with you. Yep. Good, good. So... I was so glad that Terry could come in today because, as you guys know, one of my passions is um, shopping. No, (laughs) I I I hate (laughs) shopping. I hate it. Uh, No, is community involvement and trying to make our communities a better place and trying to stimulate the community our neighborhoods to get involved. And um, I mean, they made fun of me about the community involvement. I even had a a county uh, council member screaming at me about how stupid I was for mowing the vacant lot at the corner. And you remember that, right, Lou? I mean, I thought Uh, I I was going to explode. I I, I do, Betsy, and, and, you know... You have, uh, you know, you've done so much community work within the community, really. Simple things like that just to make your block better, to make your your neighborhood a little better. And it, it really is amazing that, you know, more people don't do that. But, uh, you know, it's a testament to, to what you're all about and, and community service, that's for sure. Well, it, you know, it isn't so, well, yeah, I guess it's what I'm about, but it's, It's my way of fighting back. Uh, It's something I can do. I don't have tons of money, but I have a lawnmower and I have a hedge trimmer and I can, you know, if there's a senior citizen who needs help, then I help them. And And you're not always turning to the government for for the help, the things that you could do right right locally. No, and, and this is why... You know, people actually say, why are you doing this? And I tell them it's because my block would look like uh, a hellhole if I didn't mow and trim and pick the garbage up. And these kids watch me. I was ripping out some hedges yesterday and planting some sod. And I had every kid in the block there. And, you know, so... They see, they see me all over the street, cleaning up, picking up garbage, and I keep hoping that it will keep them from throwing more trash on the ground. But, but now I'm starting to think that maybe they're saying, ooh, let's watch Betsy pick up our garbage. <laughs> I don't know. I keep hoping it will work. But, um, you know, the kids always, they're really interested, and... But this is what we saw as children. My parents are still very, You're very right. involved in community service and doing things. Transportation Center, um, AAUW, Girl Scouts, very involved. And, and this is what I grew up with. And, pride. Pride it was. We need our pride back. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't live in a grow up in a busy town, but people never threw out, threw garbage on the street, never. And you know, I remember when I first moved to Wilkesbury, there was people on that street who would take brooms and sweep their sidewalks and sweep the street. And, and now we can't even get the city to sweep the street. But, but one of the criticisms I've had is that, you know, 
Well, we pay. Why don't you call the city to do that? Because we pay them to do that. And that's so taxation, I think, has uh, been a detriment to community activism. First of all, people have less money. And and second of all, you've already paid somebody to do this. They just aren't doing it. it so I, I don't know. Terry, what do you think? Well, I, I think a lot of people aren't even cleaning up after their own little area. And, not, you know, if you think you don't have a gift, everyone has a gift of some sort that they can use. And even when it comes to the paper and trying to get stories, you know, there's a lot of people that have wonderful stories, but they're afraid to step out. They think maybe their one little story, their one little idea to make a change isn't good enough, so they don't speak up. But when it comes to even the Founders Day and the story that we did on that, and by the way, I want to say Founders Day again is June 27th on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. But the one family that started that 33 years ago, that was just a small idea. And look what that turned into. So if people would just step out, and Lou, you know what we were talking about when we were writing the article for Founders Day, how... Do you think 33 years ago, just this simple little idea was going right. to change Tunkhannock that much? And, and I had this other idea, and this one's really off the wall. I thought of it years ago. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> okay, we're ready. <laughs> you know, just what if a lot of the little towns had something like a fundraiser, raise $500, and then say whoever in the town cleans their property up and makes the biggest change gets the $500? Do we always have to wait? For the town or the you know the government or anyone to come through, it's it's it just would be beautiful to see a lot of the little towns that I'm going through that have really become pretty decrepit. People have just walked off and left them, and they're not beautiful like they used to be anymore, but they can be. And it doesn't you know what? It doesn't even take money. It just takes that backbone and the pride you were talking about, like Betsy, what you're doing in your town. Yeah. If everyone would just take one property, just take something, and these aren't even your properties that you're cleaning. No. You're just you're just trying to make it better. Yeah, and, and I have considered uh, trying to secede from the city and having <laughs> Southwell's Township so that I could have all my tax go. dollars back, 3% that I pay in. And, I mean, I could buy a snowplow. I could, I mean, I could pressure wash the streets. I could hire the neighborhood kids. Uh, Tremendous amount of money. We could have our own garbage pickup. So I think we need South Wells Township, you know, just secede from the city. I'd put speed bumps in on my road so that people couldn't race down these children, play in the streets. And one of these days, one of them's going to get killed by some jerk who thinks that it's a raceway because it's a one-way street? Um, so we have so, to start small. Uh, yeah, and and if it means a block at a time, it's a it's a block better than what it was before, right? Right. That's what we have to teach our children now. They've walked away from it because maybe our generation has too, because we've been spoiled. We actually just depended on everyone else, and now it's time to. That awareness, wake up and get excited yeah. again. Well, bring the excitement I mean, we, back. But the thing is, we haven't been spoiled. We just expect other people oh, good, to yes. do it because True. we've paid for it. So give me my money back. Give everybody their money back and say, you know what? Do it yourself. And <laughs> and you know what? And then if somebody doesn't do it, if our neighbor doesn't do it, that's okay. But at least we haven't robbed them of their money and and they've made their choice. And I that's okay. I'll pick up his garbage. Most people would do it or have the wherewithal to hire somebody to do it. Right. So uh, I you know, I, the taxation is the root of all evil. I mean, it is bad and it's because we're always looking at how the government spends that money and um well we don't have to get paid for everything we do as we very well know (laughs) yeah really (laughs) yeah yeah none of us are making any money on this and uh (laughs) we all crawled out of bed very early this morning just like you guys right absolutely (laughs) you know and it's you know one of the interesting things in early on 
in your statements was that someone asked you, why do you do this? And I think the answer would have been, why aren't you doing this? I like that. Yeah. You know, and, and, and sometimes I think that we need to be embarrassed in, into action. You know, it's, we, need, we need to say, you know, like question that individual and say, why aren't you doing this, Betsy? So, you know, it's, you know, either way, it's, you know, and I'm also thinking of you seceding from Wilkesbury, <laughs> and, you know, if Mayor Layton is listening to the show, he's probably thinking after 12 years of being a mayor and she's finally gone. <laughs> no, <don't>. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and so, it's not yeah. like our street brings in that much revenue because I don't yeah, even know how many people are working. There's a lot of retired people and uh, and a lot of non-workers, so yes, uh, yes. It, 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 they would lose very little revenue by uh, yeah. by letting me yeah. secede. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe that's Monday's goal, Betsy. Maybe that's Monday's goal. Put that in front of the mayor and see what you can do about it. He might just sign you right off, and, and then that'll be a whole new talking point for the national news. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but you know, the thing of it is that in, in properties in the hands of the public will be taken, uh, of this public citizen, will be taken care of. You, you know, will, because what happens is, you know, I'm looking at places like South Wales where there isn't, I mean, how many of your homes, on South Wall Street is, are really owned by the people that are living there, but see, I, I don't think it's a huge number. You know, so now there's no reason to up to keep up their properties because they think maybe the government should be doing it or the landlord should be doing it. So they, they just decide to live there, and that's the end of it. So I'm not sure what the answer is to, to really clean up these towns and get our people motivated, but I know that, uh, you know, the Independent Gazette is an eye for for just the common man. And, and I think that's a real positive thing in our society and in our culture to try and make some changes. Yeah. Hey, uh, it's time for another break. Boy, this hour mm-hmm. is just flying by. So 94.3, The Talker, Sanity Check. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Saturday mornings, 94.3 FM, The Talker. are back at Sanity Check 94.3 The Talker. Give us a call 888-577-4487 You got some nice ladies here to talk to today and give us your feedback on uh, community involvement, any ideas you have because we're always looking for ideas on how to stimulate our the people in our communities to become a part of them once again. Well, you know, one of my thoughts were uh, when we talked about who's taking responsibility, is it the government or when we were talking about the apartments in the last segment. But what I really think is that the world is desperate for leadership. I think that they that we're just wanting someone else to fix it, but it, it really has to go back down to the family level. I think that's where it all begins. The foundation is, that's where we have to begin again. Yeah. But to get strong. How do you, that is a learned thing, okay? Um, and, and I exactly had years ago, I had um, a babysitter and, um, she was staying with me while I was working and she had a a young son. And so I I had live in help and she got food stamps and had grown up in a welfare household and was getting food stamps. And the one day I made a lasagna and I went to work and um, I came home and I looked in the refrigerator, and the lasagna wasn't in the refrigerator. And I thought, Where, what did she do with that lasagna? Well, I fed, she never wrapped it up and put it in the refrigerator. She would never wrap the, the cheese to keep the end from getting hard. She would never close the top of the box of cereal. I had to teach her how to do those things because... She did not grow up with that because these things were always just given, you know, they got the free block of right. cheese, they exactly. got the 
So you slice the end off and you throw it away. No big deal. So how, in some of these families, how do we teach that? It certainly isn't being taught in our schools how to can or freeze no. or uh, conserve. I mean, they you don't even see hear about recycling anymore. I mean, when my daughter was in school, if I threw something away that could be recycled, she would have ripped my head off. If I threw something on the ground, you're littering. And this is what was talked about. Remember, we had the Indian crying on TV. Yes. You know? And and now they have this, um, um, you know, you don't even see this is your brain on drugs anymore. You know, not that I think our tax dollars should be going towards frying eggs, but uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's what happened. We aren't even That's teaching the them through TV. Yeah, that is the question. What has happened? And we need to go backward to we need to go back in time. And that as brings us back can. to the media again, because, I mean, TV is they're more than happy to uh, to let them not close the top of the cereal. But but. None of these things are taught anymore, but some of these, now we have generations of people who aren't taught. So how do we fix this? Well, I think we're waking up. I think many people are waking up and they're tired of what we're seeing and we can't keep going on the road that we're going. All the gimmicks, all the things that we have to save time are just exhausting everyone. We're better off not having all the... Yeah, I mean, you watch TV today and you think that the world revolves around shopping Right. And movie stars, you know, and television and 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 that's is the world today. And it's not at all. But many places I go and people that I'm talking to, they're all saying, what happened? Everything has changed. It's it's worse than it's ever been. Yeah, that's what many are saying. But we we just have to start turning that around. So I know the answer. The answer is by the (laughs) the Quad County Independent Gazette. Oh, there we go. Any, any of the independent gazettes. And and in your communities, um, you could probably talk to Terry about her experiences with working with the Founders Day people if you're interested in doing something like that in your community. Uh, I would love to see something like that in Wilkes-Barre uh, because I think our founders are uh, rolling over in their graves. Exactly. And, uh, you know, they, they've they torn down historic buildings, um, you know, everything in Wilkes-Barre to repair it. They never maintain, but to repair it always costs $150,000. So we can't, you know, oh, the roof on the firehouse, $150,000. The fountain in the square, $150,000. You know, and it's like, wow, is that like all the mayor, like maybe those are the only numbers he does, you know? It's like, oh, uh, uh, you want to move a new business into the city? $150,000, you know? (laughs) Maybe maybe that's all he could conceive of. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, more Founders Days or that type of community thing. I mean, we have Cherry Blossom Festival, the Fine Arts Fiesta. Uh, Fiesta. I mean, those things are great. And the people do come out to these type of events. And I think it benefits the community on the whole. But we need to do it more of it. And and stress every day that just do a little something and and set an example. I tell our vets whenever I give any talks, even though they've given their service, their service is not over now. We need them more now than ever. Come out of retirement. Come and start getting involved in in some of these local, just like the the, um, the Independent Gazette, the new office where it's going to be. Let them come. You know, it, it could be the smallest idea. I'm not saying these are good ideas, but they're ideas. So throw them out. Throw something out there. Right. But I even said at one point, there's many people that don't have enough food. Why Why not have a little garden? Why not teach your children how to just have, remember, well, the victory gardens. Not that I remember them, but I do remember hearing about them. Mm-hmm. So even uh, the vets come out and just help your community. Right. And, and they'll feel better. Yeah. And so will the younger generation well, they're interested. This is a lost. You know, they, they are interested because, boy, when I'm doing something, they show up. I got a pack of them. 
and follow me around. Yeah. So you're, you're the Pied Piper, Betsy. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's really interesting because you know when I talk to my kids, and then I could see these. Oh, here comes another history lesson. <laughs> but, but but when when I started to talk about my uncle who was lost in the Pacific just about ten days um, before the war was over, their boat got got torpedoed. All of a sudden, it became interesting because now it's not just oh another picture in the in the book in the history book. Now it's real life. Now it's something they can identify with, and maybe that's part of the issue is that. We're not teaching our children in the schools of why history is important. And, you know, it goes to, you know, man's whole life about history is boring, history is this, but history shouldn't be boring. And I think it's, it's important to know our history and to really identify, you know, the struggles that, you know, these folks went through for us and, and the struggles that we should be going through for our next generation. And, and it, it really, Absolutely. I noticed that it just became so more powerful when they had a way to relate to it. I don't know if that's part of the answer to our education system, but it's certainly better than just saying, make sure you know the dates and times and names. Yeah, that that's interesting, Mike. Um, boy, I could talk so much more on this because I just went to the reenactment of the 150th anniversary of Lincoln's funeral, and one mm-hmm. of my ancestors was a pallbearer. But wow. we are in the last... 30 seconds. So, Mike, Lou, you got to do your thing and say goodbye. It was a pleasure being here, even though I had nightmares. Come home soon, Lou. And uh, be safe. And of course, God bless all. Good. Good to see you. Thank, and thank you, Terry. Thank you. Thanks, John. 